Welcome to part two of my 3D printer cabinet and dry box build. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to make this functional dry box and filament guide system that you see in front of you. And if you're interested in making the cabinet like this one, be sure to check out part one of the video. Just keep in mind right now that the shelf that the 3D printer would normally sit on has been removed from the cabinet just so you guys can easily see this dry box system. So let's get started. To start off your dry box project, the first thing you need to do is find yourself an airtight container. I got this one here at my local Walmart for a few dollars and you can see that the lid has a blue gasket in it making it airtight. Most importantly though you're going to have to find a container that fits your spools in them when turned on its side. The spool should have enough room to fit inside and also spin freely. This container size is about 11 liters or so so anything uh, of that size or slightly larger should be able to fit a standard size spool. After you found a suitable airtight container, you're going to want to visit the link in the description down below. It's going to take you to my Thingverse page where you're going to find this project and all the STL files that you're going to need to print these parts. So I've tried to make pretty much all the parts for this project printable and since of course you're building a dry box for a 3D printer, you probably already have a 3D printer to print these parts. I'm going to go over what each of these parts is for as we go through the build. But the only other thing you're really going to need is some hardware and so I'm using M3 socket head cap screws and they're about 16 millimeters long each. There are two shorter ones that you're going to need at about 10 millimeters long and uh, optionally you can of course use some plastic threading screws if you want to use those instead of uh, socket head cap screws. You'll also notice here a tube. This is a one inch outer diameter tube and you can find this at your local hardware store. They should have some PVC pipe that'll work. Uh, it just needs to be one inch outer diameter, it doesn't really matter what you use. And finally up here, you're going to need some uh, clear tubing. You can get PTFE tubing or vinyl tubing, uh, as long as the inner diameter will easily pass through your filament and the outer diameter does not exceed four millimeters. So you're going to want to begin by turning the container onto its side and looking at it from the side. Next thing you want to do is grab your spool and you're going to want to put it inside the container lifting it off the floor of the container, making sure it's not touching the ceiling either, and find about the midway point, so in both this direction and up and down. And then you're gonna to wanna to take a Sharpie or a marker and try and mark the center of the spool. And so you can see that I've already done that here. There's a little black dot here. Then you're gonna take these pieces here that you've printed already. And so it just looks like a circle with a little loop on the one face. Put it inside your container and orient it such that the loop is ready to support something. And it should be supporting that one inch PVC pipe in the future. But right now you're gonna to wanna to just turn it around and put it in there and you'll be able to mark roughly the centers of those holes. So we're gonna mount this thing right to the inside face uh, using those holes. So we're gonna drill those out now. Now that the holes are drilled, you're gonna to wanna to hold off on mounting this tube support just for a second because you're going to want to find the measurements of that center point and transfer it over to the opposite face of the container. And obviously if you put the mount in there, you won't be able to see uh, the center point up against the ruler. So with your center points transferred to both sides, you can now screw in your tube supports on both sides. I ran out of M3 socket head cap screws and nuts for these guys here. So I ended up using some plastic thread forming screws and on the back side, if you're worried about air or moisture entering into your dry box, you can just add a dab of hot glue over each of the screws to seal those things up. Looking inside the box from the front, we can now take our measuring tape and measure the distance between these two supports. And so about 12 and a quarter inches for me should work just fine. And so I'm gonna grab my one inch outer diameter tube and I'm gonna cut this to a length of 12 and a quarter inches so it'll fit nicely between those supports. With the tube now cut to the proper length, we can slip it inside our spool and then of course put it inside our box to test fit it, make sure it's the right length and make sure there is no interference and our spool can rotate freely. Now optionally, if you guys decide to print these locking collars, there will be at least two of them per spool. And so these guys here will slip onto the ends of the tube and they can lock the spool in place to keep it from moving side to side. And how it does that, it's just a little locking ring. And so an M3 socket head cap screw goes in the one end with a locking nut on the other end. And when tightened down, it should tighten 
onto the tube and keep that spool from, like I said, moving along the actual tube. So now we're gonna have to figure out how to get our filament out of our box while maintaining a seal. And so the plan here is to have the filament exit out the back of the box. And I'm gonna want it to spool out the bottom, up through the uh, back of the box and up towards my printer. So my printer is gonna be above this box. And so I want my uh, filament exiting on an angle up towards the top so it has a nice easy bend radius so it doesn't get pinched. Now the parts we're gonna be using are three parts here that I shared with you guys on fingers. And so this part here up the top is the collet. This part mounts to the outside of the box and this part here mounts to the inside of the box. And so the box wall gets clamped between these two parts here. So we're gonna have to drill one hole in the middle and then we're gonna have to drill two smaller holes so this part can clamp. And you can use some hot glue around the outside to seal that up. Um, but bring this thing back in focus here, you can see uh, that the filament, like I said, will exit or enter rather on this side at an angle and exit here. Now, when this thing gets clamped together, you will be able to take your PTFE tube or vinyl tube and you'll be able to push it through the collar and just kind of force it uh, through and it'll actually stop right here on this uh, smaller diameter. It's big enough for the filament to pass through, but it's not large enough for the uh, tube to pass through. And so that nice tight fit is gonna be part of the airtight seal. And then to prevent this tube from pulling out in case the filament sort of wants to pull on it as it gets fed into your extruder, you're gonna tighten these two bolts down just snug, not too tight, but basically what it does is it just has a few little teeth in there that are a little, a little bit hard to see. But as you tighten down, the teeth will grab on the outer diameter of the tube and prevent it from getting pulled out. So this is just a little bit of a locking collar and that should seal everything up nice and tight and allow our filament to exit on an angle. And so like I said, it's gonna come down the bottom here, in through here and out through our tube. I just finished tightening down the bolts on this angled guide. The PTFE tube has been pushed all the way and is seated in place. The collet bolts at the back have been snugged down, not too tight, just tight enough that the PTFE tube can't be pulled out. And it's time to take a piece of filament and insert it in, making sure that it glides effortlessly, which it does, so we're good to go here. One other thing to take note here is the position of the angled guide. I offset mine to the right hand side. I figured that I can comfortably fit three spools inside this container. And so the spool on the far right hand side will be the spool that is active and will be fed into my printer. The other two will be dormant. If you have a printer with let's say dual extruders, you can of course put another one of these fittings in the middle and run both of them up or down to your printer. Before we put our dry box into use, there are the final parts here from the STL files that I provided that I wanna just go over. And so these guys here are just clips and you can clip them uh, with some wood screws to the back of a cabinet and so in the beginning of the video I showed you the cabinet that I built and it's made of wood and so I can just put two screws through there and then of course guide my PTFE tube up to the top of my printer so you can print a few of these and obviously feel free to use them for yourself if you have a place to screw them into and finally you'll notice that there is a ball joint looking thing here along with this tube and so this ball joint is intended to also be screwed into the back wall of the cabinet and this part was printed in one piece so the ball joint can't come out it's captive in there and this tube here is designed to press firmly into the ball joint and now we have a swivel guide and so this is the final place where the filament will exit before entering the print head and so it's going to loop back down and around into the extruder um, and so if you take your PTFE tube it should press nicely into the bottom following the radius of this tube and it will stop at the end before coming out. And so with this thing screwed into the back of the cabinet, the print head will be moving around and pulling the filament and it gives it a nice swivel guide uh, to pull this thing around in any sort of direction and prevent the filament from binding. So again, feel free to use this part if you guys have a place to fasten it. And so finally, we can see the entire dry box assembly in place inside the cabinet. And at the bottom of the dry box, you'll notice there's a black strip there. That's actually a strip of Velcro. 
I put that in there onto the cabinet floor as well as the bottom of the dry box just to hold it in place and keep things from shifting around. You can see the PTFE tube all the way up the back side of the cabinet being held in place with those clips that I just showed you guys. And at the very top, there is the ball joint guide. And of course, like I said, the printer isn't in place. Otherwise, that piece of filament would feed itself into the extruder and we'd be ready to print. So one last optional thing for you guys are these little temperature and humidity sensors. I'm gonna put the eBay link in the description down below. And these things can easily be installed onto your dry box by just cutting a hole in the back and gluing them in place. And that way you can actually measure the humidity inside your dry box and make sure that your filament is not taking on any moisture. So that wraps up this dry box build. I hope you guys found it very useful. Don't forget to check out the links in the description down below for the STL files for the parts used in this video. And as always, if you guys have any questions regarding this build, please leave a comment down in the comment section down below. I try and read them all and respond to everybody's comments. See you guys in the next video.